a very warm welcome to you all, wherever you may be, to today's edition of Unlocked SK, the original interactive talk show, broadcasting to you live from our micro streaming studio here on the beautiful island of Corfu in sunny Greece. And as you know by now, we're broadcasting live on Facebook, but we're also on YouTube and the video platform that's Vimeo.com and of course Twitter and Twitter's Paris. Periscope. But of course, is also the best, is the studio website at www.studiokirkra.com, all of which this video can be seen in superb quality. And as always, I'm very grateful and thankful to have the help and assistance of our wonderful producer, Claire Haas, who will be answering all your comments on Facebook Live Messenger and taking those elusive calls from you on Skype. And of course, as you know by now, no broadcast would be quite right without the irrepressible, irredoubtable, one and only Thomas Haas. Hello, Thomas. How are you today? Hello, Adrian, and hello, everybody. Hi, nice to see you. Nice for joining again. Hey, we are back after a troublesome day yesterday so yes. we apologize for that it hit us out of the blue but it was uh very it wasn't stressful really was it it was not a, a, a day where they say oh i had stress no. around it was just uh something unexpected and unexpected came in the visit uh, in the form of a visitor of a couple <laughs> of snakes and of course we posted that we said uh, sorry it was it, it was crazy yesterday so it was a day full of wildlife for the studio and we had to sort it out so <laughs> we had to clean our van out we had to clean the location and make sure there is nothing else here but thanks for joining thanks for being back guys it's great and when i see you start commenting already if you want to comment here live on the show don't hesitate come over and write us a comment right now or send us an email to inbox at studiocaregiver.com and here we got the first is lauren smith from portsmouth hi hope you're all snake free <laughs> it's sunny in portsmouth hi folks great thanks lauren it's Brilliant to see you back. No, no, it was, it was a little bit of a... Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it was drama, that's for sure. It was more drama than drama, anything else, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but we talk in a minute. Richard said to be saying, Hi, Thomas Gere and Adrian, how are you? Uh, it's sunny here in Bournemouth today. Great. So, uh, great. Sarah Usman is watching. Steve Bowers is watching. Julie Kemi is saying, Hi, guys. Welcome back. Uh, thank and you. And many more coming in. Guys, thank you so much. Andrew Wood, hello from... Uh, from Andrew Wood and Amy Wood in sunny Torquay in Devon. Lovely, mm, nice. Torquay, lovely place. Yes, absolutely. On the south coast of Devon. Delightful. Full of palm trees, Thomas, by the way, is what I remember. <laughs> Most yeah, gardens seem to have it. Brilliant. Yeah, and here you can see ah, outside our trees, van yes. and see what's happening there. Uh, I just lost all the cameras here. I have no idea what's, what's oh going dear, on. But hey, it's okay. Uh, let's have a look. There we go. Here we go. Here we and go. that is our HQ currently at the moment. Absolutely beautiful. Um, one of our commenters yesterday, Marcus Bunnison, was uh, commenting on your snake drama and uh, very ended happily, thank heavens. Uh, he made the point that maybe because you saw a snake, there must be a tree of knowledge nearby. Yeah, and here's the tree of knowledge exactly. strike <laughs> next to us. Oh, no, it's a little bit windy, but it's a beautiful weather here on the beautiful island of Corfu and thanks for writing in. See, this is the other view we have straight out from our van. Lavinia is writing in saying, Calispera, hope you are snake free today. My daughter and grandson uh, flights direct Madrid to Corfu with Iberia cancelled this morning oh. for the 10th of August. Oh. No reason given. Boo. Oh, you know what? That's a, that's that, uh, see, that's that's what is one of the big things we're gonna talk today yes, because yes. a lot of dates changed and we got a lot of information in from people here saying hey uh we got some some dates over here uh what got cancelled but we were so sure we're gonna go on holiday it, many were absolutely uh there's some information come through just recently since we've been online from easyjet i do believe uh, in case you're wondering uh, everybody it's a lovely beautiful sunny day here in corfu and it's 23 degrees celsius a slight wind but nothing too much untoward to worry about i don't think no, it's exactly 24. Oh, 24. Sorry, man. Up one. No, <laughs> I always cry right. out, but what, what is oh, great? Well, it's still a 24, you know? It's and got a bit have... hotter since we've come on air. <laughs> it's a, no, no, it it's it. You, yours well, is my telling you something wrong. Yeah, my, no. my, my, same thing. Oh, anyway. no, it's guys, 24 degrees, a southwesterly wind with 40 miles an hour, humidity of 62%, and a great visibility of 9.7 kilometers. UV index is 3, and sunset is just oh, yeah, 9 minutes past 9. And we're coming not up bad. to the longest day of the year. Uh, sadly, we are, yes. That's uh, not far away now just a week away uh callous bear to everybody it's lovely to be back and to have you on board for another unlocked sk 
Yeah, you know what? We got a lot of news. Let me say to a few peop more people, hello, and then we kick off straight with all the date changes and what's going on with tourism. How does it look here on the beautiful island of, of Corfu and how do the locals are getting ready, the businesses, the apartments, the bars, everything for welcoming the tourism, what allegedly is starting very, very soon on this beautiful island. But here we go, and this Steve Baus is saying, hello, uh, it's thunderstorms here in Manchester, Ooh. not the patch on Corfu ones. No, no, <laughs> no. sadly not. We have a fantastic weather here, and that's what so many people longing for. Yeah. You know, it's uh, it's it's a little bit sad, but hey, it's coming in. Uh, Nikos Lewis and Annabelle Lewis saying, Kalispera to you all. Tom Giddings is saying, hi everybody from a wet and stormy Ebeldor. Oh. Pierre Dowers, hello. Hope you're all successfully de serpent. Yes, I think it. we so Yes, I think we Great. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret Johnson, hi everybody. Welcome back. Snake free, I hope. Warm and muggy in Kent. Dancing to music. Oh, oh that's great. That's I hope this was our Margaret. music at the beginning, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But David Roseman, hi from a uh, fantastic sunny 27 degrees. Romney, Marsh. It sounds good, hotter David. there than here. Yes, good heavens. Enjoy it, David, while you've got it. Lovely. <laughs> Margaret Black is, saying, uh, Black is saying, welcome back, guys. Hope you're all well and safe. Overcast here in Durham, but sun is trying to Peak through. Oh, let's hope it does, Margaret, in the next half hour or so. Or less. We're trying to blow those clouds Blow away. those. Definitely. Yeah. And also, uh, Dennis Butland. Uh, Denise Butland is saying, afternoon, hope all is good on the island. It's fantastic here on the island. Sure After is, a Denise. little bit of drama yesterday. But Cassie Duckworth, missed you yesterday. Hope you are oh. snake-free. Yes, we <laughs> thanks got snake-free. And it was quite a storm when we started. When we, we, we planned the broadcast. I check and Claire, our producer, our boss, uh, walked past the van. And there's steps next to it and uh, as she walks past she was maybe you know a, f a few inches away from this snake and I spotted it and she spotted it and she carried Lucky. it quickly on and then all of a sudden it just looked there and stood, sat there and then went inside the door frame said, that's oh, handy isn't it <laughs> you know what are you gonna do now mm. Yeah. Quite well, and uh, we all know this year it seems like no, it's not seem it is there's more snakes on the island but they they all except one they're all harmless Yes. Maybe there's not so many, m just the fact there's more snakes. It's that we're seeing more of them because there's less people around to disturb them. It could be that one. Hard to say, but certainly it's ideal sne uh, snake times at the moment on the, on the island, that's on for the sure. Definitely. Yes, with the weather and the lack of people around. Yeah. Uh, I have seen a lot nature, of nature recovered here fantastically. When you go for walks, I it is quite yeah, uh, yeah. interesting. I see things I haven't seen before. Oh, right, great. I, I saw you a funny know, beetle a on your step uh, uh, half an hour ago. Yeah, the a red, black red. red. Well, yes, yes, I know, and it's beautiful to watch. It was, it absolutely, yes. So I wildlife don't know what it is was, fantastic. Mind. But you know what? Yesterday we had this incident with uh, the snake here, and uh, uh, it was... It was not extreme. I mean, I left it, and then we met for a coffee, and I discussed with you, and I know what to do, because it's gone now inside. I got boxes, I got equipment in there, I go in there every day uh, to work, so I don't need to be bitten. I've been bitten before, you know? So Indeed, you, yeah. in, you, know, you remember that one. I do. So it's, you know, you're cautious. You can't see it proper. Absolutely. And then, uh, that's I the problem, isn't yeah, it? Identification. That's, is identifi the that's the issue, mm, is identification. Yes. So we're making so much fuss about something, what turns out in the end, you know what, it's actually harmless. Yeah. But, you know, being you talking with a few at people... At the beginning, though, of course. No, no, of course not. But even so, I got reminded and said, okay, don't forget the people who are uh, allergic. Absolutely, there you are You know, it lots, can yes, be a, a harmless Hydrogen. snake, yeah. but uh, if you're allergic mm. and you don't know until you're bitten... So uh, a bit late uh, then, isn't it's it? Really? A bit so late caution then. Exactly. Is so always. caution is definitely, yeah. but we have to also preserve that uh, uh, species. And uh, for sure, you know, we're just talking to somebody to put a little bit of a program together because he is a PhD uh, yes. in that. That's and a good thing, isn't it? We must always have a positive to come out of a negative. And by hooking up with a, a, a new friend to the studio, who is an expert in snakes on the island, we hope to be able to bring you uh, maybe more than one program relating to snakes on this island. And hopefully within that, we can get some clear identification of what the, the one type of snake everybody should be advised to look out for because as we're perennially being told here there is only one species that is opposes a risk but then as thomas has just pointed out if you have an allergic reaction and you're not sure of then as always it's best to uh, you have no exercise idea exercise extreme caution as they say ah uh, definitely definitely and that's that's one of the uh, uh problems you know uh, 
paard. We, we, all, we all panic too quickly, but you know what, we didn't panic, we met for a coffee and I started exactly. showing the, the owner, the, okay, what is this for a snake, is this harmless, is this harmless or venen- venomous, uh, what, what, what is, he said, nah, it's nothing, then another Greek looked at it, I said, no, 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 I'm not sure, that looks like a bad one, be careful, uh, get somebody to take that out, and you know, and then, it just snowballed. Uh, but he made the all-important phone call to a friend. It happened to be a friend at the local fire station, which was a masterstroke, wasn't it, really? Uh, it was, uh, yeah, but everything happened so yes, quickly. Exactly. It's out of your control. And all of a sudden, I had the fire brigade there and said, OK, <laughs> let's go to your house. Let's have a look. Let's make sure. And then everything went. And, you know, when you start, you know the studio, how much equipment we have. And when we have to shift carefully everything around, it takes hours. Uh, yes, no? yeah. And the guys I really have to say thank you to the fire brigade here in Corfu. They're fantastic. They, they guys are great, Absolutely. not just for snakes, but for fighting fires. And they are totally. one of the best. Uh, I know definitely, and many others know, they are, special, uh, they, they are specialists. And when you look at uh, how quick they respond, respond and how well they organized is incredible <laughs> yes uh, i never knew they were so many experts in snakes so that was a, a surprise to me but that just shows you the true worth and value of having such a fabulous fire brigade on this island we've often spoken about them in night shift a year ago or so didn't we thomas yeah how diligent they were and of course to the island it's the most terrifying thing a fire but equally to most people as we saw by all the comments on facebook messenger yesterday there is this inherent fear within all of us really of snakes yes that, really. exactly and that's why i was so happy when we got a private message from a doctor of biology here on the island and say guys you know what do you want to do something together with snakes he got live specimens he they studied them and they brought more you know, they protect them. That's and we brilliant. said, you know what, that's a great opportunity to bring that whole thing a little bit closer, educate at the same time and take the fear away exactly. from that yes. and help preserve a, a species, you know, and that's, that's what it's all about. Yes, because they're wonderful creatures at the end of the day, just like the horrifying sharks, you know, they're feared in the water as snakes are feared on land. So let's try and uh, bust some of these myths of fear regarding these beautiful creatures because at the end of the day we all have to share this one lovely planet so we really ought to get on one with another definitely and hey uh there's more messages coming in guys thank you for tuning in thanks for watching Cassie Duckworth missed you yesterday hope you all snake free there <laughs> around <laughs> and uh, Gary Schumann hello here sunny 21 celsius in the Netherlands. Oh, hello, hello Netherlands. Netherlands. That's we great. like the Netherlands. Great country, great people. Anthony is watching, so you've got another fix of your Corfu holics oh. here. <laughs> and Margaret Johnston, uh, Sunday is the longest day uh, yes, of it's the year. It's also yes. her birthday. Oh, oh what a great, wow. fantastic thing. Brilliant. Good one. Have a lovely day. At least it's one that you'll remember, (laughs) more likely than mine sometime in November. So that's a good one. Summer's Day to be born. How great. Ah, it's fantastic. Yeah, and uh, Olivia Maria Lockhart. Hello, all. Hi, No more snakes having a massive storm here in Manchester. Thunder, lightning, and torrential rain. But still warm and humid. Hope you're all well, and Corfu is still beautiful. Of course. Oh, it's it's getting beautiful by the day. It misses (laughs) you, Livy, and all our other lovely, wonderful viewers and followers. Yeah, Johan Dini van Zanden, uh, Zanden uh, I hope I said this correct, I apologize. Kalispera greetings from Holland, 23 degrees. Nice to see you back. Thanks, guys. There are so many great messages coming in. That so brilliant. And uh, a couple of people, uh, I saw a message earlier here, and that's what just leads on. Yes, Simon Berry. Hi, Simon. He's, he's sad, but he's saying, hi, gentlemen, hope. Hope all is well after yesterday. Thunderstorms here in Manchester. I've changed my holiday to July 2021. Oh. So hopeful to see you then. And that is uh, sad, but we will be looking forward to seeing you, Simon, when we do. It will be an absolute pleasure, of course. Uh, but that's sad for you, though, isn't it? Having to wait that extra year to come and see and return to your beautiful island. Yeah, but you know what? I don't blame people when they start now rebooking the holiday for 2021 because we got a problem. And the problem is that the, the, the dates change yeah. on us they constantly. Yeah. And when they say, okay, we are, are open for tourism, let me see over here if I can get that quickly in. That's this example was posted today here uh on Corfu, and I just want to see these pictures. Give me a second, and it's quite 
you know, heartbreaking. Have a look here. This is the pictures we received. Oh, no, they're not we received. What were posted today? Nobody about. On, no, and that's Corfu down 1045, uh, uh, Sorocco Square in the morning, and the others got taken at 11 o'clock down at Liston. And I just go through a little bit. Yes, we are open for tourism. Uh, the, uh, Where some of the shops are open. Not all of them, we have yeah. to say. Yeah. It's not all of the shops are open, but when you look into that now, uh, that's how the list looked this morning and this time a year normally is Yeah, I've full. seen more people in the teeth of winter, quite frankly. Yeah, and that's what was also on the post. They are worrying about what's gonna happen in the winter. But you can see there's the shops open, the tourist shops is open. But again, not, not everything. So it is quite a mixed feeling here on the island between the business owners themselves. Oh, absolutely. We keep hearing this and we keep reporting it to you. Um, but it's I'm, I've been aware, Thomas, of a couple of businesses that were doing themselves up to be ready to be opened, uh, open for one day, and then all of a sudden they're closed again. So it is, as we keep saying, patchy. But certainly that is not a scene on a beautiful sunny morning in Corfu town that you'd expect to see. Just absolutely hardly anybody about uh, it. It is, and that's really you know, heartbreaking on one side. That's why we said, okay, this week we will go more or less here at our beautiful HQ in Notos. But, hey, uh, you know, going in and then showing you uh, pictures like that, it's... it's uh, it's going to fill up, but the date's changed. And what's going on with the dates now, Aid? Well, it's all changed, really. Uh, we spoke about groups. They've now um, separated into two groups. And we're beginning now phase two, where the uh, islands have opened up and international flights are now arriving in Athens and Thessaloniki from the 29 countries that we've already said. Uh, this information has come from Aegean Airways. Group A comprises of Austria, Bulgaria, Croatia, Cyprus, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, Germany, Hungary, Iceland, Ireland, Latvia, Liechtenstein, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malta, Norway, Poland, Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia and Switzerland. Now all those countries are free, in theory, to arrive here at Athens or Thessaloniki without having to have a COVID-19 test, just random testing. However, Group B are subject to complete test. Everyone on from this following group of countries that are allowed to land, and they are Albania, Belgium, France, Italy, North Macedonia, the Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, and other non-EU countries, such as Australia, New Zealand, and Israel. Uh, as I say, everybody there will have to be tested, and they have to provide an address for 24 hours whilst they wait for the test results to come through. Connecting passengers are also subject to tests, but then they are allowed to continue to their final destination, providing they safe self-isolate there. Um, the most important piece of information that stands out to me is the Greek government have extended flight restrictions to and from both the United Kingdom and Turkey until at least June the 29th. Nice. And land border arrivals from Albania, North Macedonia, Bulgaria are subject to random testing. And it says, so that you reckon, I don't know, all Greek airports are due to take on board international arrivals from the 1st of July. Uh, there wow. are no, no international ferries until the 1st of July also. And after changing around rather a, a lot, uh, the Greek government has announced the Albanian border remains closed until July the 1st. Those two last bits of information kind of yeah. came to us from Jan Manesse in Benitez, who found them from the Greek government website yesterday, and they were posted on Facebook. So it's a patchy picture. It has changed a little bit. We've got this separation now, groups A and group B. Uh, you had some breaking news from EasyJet, didn't you, that no flights to Corfu were going to be in until I think you said the 1st of August, was that right? 1st of August. August, yes. Well, that's a little bit different to what we uh, were thinking about a week it's ago. Uh, wasn't uh, it? Exactly. That, uh, mm. it's, it's changing. The times are changing. The dates are changing. <laughs> and when you look in, I mean, I'm getting regarding, uh, here I got, from Tom Giddings I, got, uh, Giddings, I got one, hoping to come end of August, but not going to book till last minute until I know Very it's wise. safe for me and people on Corfu and allowed to. So, it's a little bit <coughs> when you see the uh, flights sensible, coming in. Tom, yeah. Very sensible, that. Yes. Nikos Louvos is saying, <coughs> as I was saying in my message to Thomas, EasyJet has no information on flights to Corfu until first of August. Yeah, he sent right. me a WhatsApp earlier, and here again has flights to Corfu 
via Athens for 680 pound. Ooh. This is not very uh, this is not very clear about anything on flights as a Swiss Air. And although the flights to Corfu on the 28th of June, I received no cancellation email. All others are in the middle about in the middle about August of flying. Yeah, flights. I mean, uh, it, it's it's confusing. Everybody gets confused, especially when you've got tickets now. Uh, absolutely. Funny that Wizz Air was that airline that was one of the first airlines to start yeah. flying uh, whilst lockdown was still going on. And wasn't so it? positive Stanford. news yes, came out and absolutely. what they're gonna do and yeah, how they're gonna yeah, operate, yeah. what sh- what destinations they're gonna include and what c- countries they're gonna fly. But it it just seems to be disappearing. Indeed. Um, wh- one thing that we said we'd keep an eye on, and that is uh, COVID-19 cases, infection cases. Uh, Greece today is reporting a total of 3,134 cases, which is an increase of 13 in the last 24 hours. And pr- prior to that, it was increasing by about 20 a day. The numbers of deaths have suddenly risen by one at 184. The uh, Uh, recovered cases stay the same at 1464 but there has been for the last five or six days an incremental increase in the number of infections here in Greece Uh, and also we heard today of New Zealand for the first new cases in 24 days which was a bit of a surprise to me Thomas there was two ladies uh, relatives who had a dying relative in in, um, Wellington in, in New Zealand and they managed to get to New Zealand by flying from the UK to Doha and then on to Brisbane in Australia even though one of them had symptoms would you believe they were given special permission but they had to self-isolate, obviously, and take private transport. But New Zealand is very sad and upset about that, broken its duck for 24 days for having infected Mm. cases. Also, we must look to China, and there we've seen rises of about 36 cases per day, most coming from a major market, biggest wholesale market in Beijing. Uh, I think the case, new number of cases have actually risen since then, and I think in the last 24 hours it's gone well over 100. So there does seem to be a slight uptick in cases in many countries all of a sudden. It seems to, even here in Greece, you know, uh, yep. uh, when we saw, you know, last week it was 20 reported in one day. Now it we got yeah. 12 or 13 today uh, already. Yeah, yeah. yeah, every day so it's, it's double figures. Yeah, and yesterday they just started with allowing international flights in. Uh, yes. That's so, right. you know, that's going to be interesting to see. But, you know, also with the ferries, when I spoke with people, oh, we're going to come here now uh, in the mid of June or end of June, we drive. They can't drive either because the ferries are not running uh, until no. the 1st of July for the moment. For the moment, as it stands. But as you know, <laughs> by listening to Unlocked SK, that has changed. Um, I remember reading out some time ago that uh, the days for uh, ferries to start were the 24th of May is a date that sticks in my head, Thomas. So it just shows you how it keeps being put back further and further, doesn't right, it? Exactly, and that's what's the confusing bit, what, what's going on. Okay, they have to look at the figures, but when you look now, where are the figures being released? I haven't heard anything about the figures as much as we did under lockdown. Under lockdown, no, we got constantly true. informed what's yeah. going on. You have and to it dig seems for them to be now. You've Exactly, you now you have to, have to dig hard. for them and yes. look hard Absolutely. and make sure you got the right totally. numbers because worldwide the cases are uh, jumped over 8 million. It's 8,181,530 to be correct uh, uh, that this is uh, as of this morning and total number of deaths currently standing at 442,532 in the United Kingdom it's running at 298,665 cases with 41,950 deaths uh, the figure that stands out to me, though, which is absolutely astronomical, Thomas, is Brazil. I mean, in the last few days, the number of infected cases in Brazil has, official figures state, uh, climbed to a staggering 891,556, which is the most, the highest number of anyone, any country, and that represents a staggering 10%, would you believe, of all cases now in Brazil. Uh, Brazil's death rate has risen to 44,168, so it's only marginally (laughs) higher than the United Kingdom, would you believe? Uh, China, uh, despite the rising number of cases recently, is still reporting a total number, this is mainland China, of 83,221 with 4,634 deaths. Hong Kong is a separate entity with uh, 1,100 or so uh, cases and four deaths. 
Uh, I think the saddest day was, is New Zealand because they New were Zealand, so definitely. happy to be they 24 had, days They had free, absolutely nothing. nothing there was nothing going on. They, they, they were free, so they said arrived, they yeah. had no new cases. And now... Yeah, yeah. two tourists. Who obviously, they were there for the best of reasons. Obviously, they wanted to say goodbye to their loved one, nearest and dearest. I believe the person who was very ill was a parent of one of the two ladies that had travelled from England. But I know the New Zealanders are very upset about that. And... It, it, they're now considering about you know looking into their level because they reduced it down to the lowest level, which was level one, only mm. a few days yeah. ago, didn't they? And we we said about the the wonderful <coughs> Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, who was dancing for joy, for joy but, and uh, happiness. Uh, you yes, can see that exactly. in her face what's yes, coming. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden it's yeah, yeah. it's uh, the other way around, so and that's what I'm fear for I th- I Greece. Absolutely, I think that might explain why some of these dates are being put back put because back, the governments yeah. are actually looking at these figures and starting to worry about the R rate, that all-important number of reinfection. Yeah, but listen to this. Uh, Anthony van der Grank is writing in and saying Transavia travel to Corfu starts at the 2nd of July. Oh, yeah? Okay, thank you for that. And uh, Johan Tini van Zanden is saying we will visit Corfu on the 2nd of July. Happy to be back in this beloved island. So, ooh... It's, it's, it's fly and he's too. flying with uh, Trans Avia Do. Okay. So so that's the do. So that's great. That's the low cost Dutch airline. That's the it? low cost Dutch airline. If you guys could let us know, uh, if you want to say it, how much do you pay for the flights now to Kafu and return? Of course, if you don't want to return, just go one way. Uh, I won't blame you. But it's you know it's it's uh, this is what you hear now from the what what, what what's going. Is it gonna happen? I mean, Holland I is is know. on the A list, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. Holland uh, is on the A-list of travel, or I'm uh, mistaken uh, there. I don't know about I have, that. I have uh, no, it's not. I, no, it's Thomas, it's Group uh, B. Uh, exactly, group B. that's what I want trying to where, look now. Where, it's Group where, B. Where you have to have a test when you get here. There's no. So you have to there. have a test. You have to have a test, yes, absolutely. Uh, it's Group A where they're just doing random tests. So, you know, you might be lucky or not, as it were. But uh, I, it would be common sense if you were feeling unwell, quite frankly, quite not frankly to board a plane, wouldn't it, really? Yeah. You know? uh, he, I got a hello quickly from Mark Benison is here. Good morning, fair sirs. Stormy hello, rumble Marcus. here. Locals battering down the hatches. So, ooh, said to here. But Hold on to your hat. Yes. Uh, and here, Dave Ness is saying, oh, hi, guys. Hopefully see you in about five weeks' time when we will be driving to our beloved Corfu, and there in brackets via ferry from Ancona. Oh, great! Well, so that'd be great to see you, David. Um, safe journey, and I hope you get here. So this is in a five weeks' time. So uh, obviously, you guys must have uh, your ferry ticket, everything booked, and you got your dates going. And that's the ferry from Ancona. Uh, Nikos Luvros, the tourists have started coming by car from Bulgaria. Oh. Not the safest place for the virus, along with Romania, Poland, and the other Balkan countries so mm. that's quite true i know croatia was badly affected uh, early on and uh, bulgaria i have to say don't know much about the figures from bulgaria uh, i'll keep an eye on them now you've told us that thank you you have we have to look yeah, yeah. Uh, a few new type of tourists is coming to Kafu. the special uh, specialized tourism is doing well like walking religious gastronomy uh, yes. his, uh, history etc and the new trend herpatology Herpetology. Okay, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> People with interest in amphibians and reptiles. Uh, oh, okay. Now we understand. Now, that. Yes. now we get it, Great. man. See, we oh, learn. I can, I can imagine that. Yes, there's plenty of those to see here on this beautiful island. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely. And here, for everybody who just joined us, thanks for joining us. Thanks for logging on. Is there anything you would like to know about this beautiful holiday island of Corfu? What the situation is? What's regarding your holiday here? Don't hesitate. Write into us now, live, on air, with your comment, or send us an email to inbox at studiocarecarer.com. So, uh, but that's an interesting thing, what Nikos just said. There's a new form of tourism going to start yes. here on Corfu. And I think he's spot on with that. It's going to be specialized tourism, yeah. like the sailing tourism we got yeah. already anyway. I can see that expanding. And walkers have always been a fe- feature here, and cyclists as well. Yeah, so the Corfu I Trail just yes, got exactly. renovated completely yeah. through yeah. lockdown. They took the opportunity to Brilliant. restore the, uh, 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 the whole route through Corfu, what is a famous walking route. Indeed, fantastic. Yeah, and they proper sorted that with plugs and with enough uh, paintings you know so you can keep your directions but it's it's oh it's right. a great thing so it's is like it like it should be in any destination
where there's a lot of walking. But hey, uh, that's great, so great, so great there, stuff, there, and there's for Amazing. sure specialized yeah. tourism emerging from that one. Yes, so that might actually work, you know, in small organized groups. Might buck the trend of this wretched COVID-19, hey. Yeah, and there is lots more regarding. Steve Bowers is saying, why are we talking about flights? Let's carry on with that part of our email received today from EasyJet. Our flight on the 7th of July still not cancelled yet. No. We're delighted to announce that we are back in the skies as part of Europe start, uh, as parts of Europe start to reopen. So what is this with EasyJet? They were so... They, they said... 15th of June originally. Well, one of them, what said 15th of June, or I'm wrong? Uh, no, that might have been that Jet 2 um, outfit. What is the Jet, Jet 2 outfit two, now? I, I think it yeah. was, yes, yes. Uh, EasyJet were the airline that kept furloughing their staff uh, to the end of the month and then to the end of the next month. Um, I, I believed uh, a member of staff was telling me that they were due to resume flights to Corfu in July. So hearing the news that it's back to August is another example of how everybody is just putting things on hold and pushing it back into the long grass, it seems to me. Uh, yeah, you read another statistic out, Thomas, that said a, a lo about a load factor from a TUI flight, didn't you, that was only running oh, at 30%. Oh, yes, TUI are saying now the, the maximum they're going to operate this year is oh, 30%. That is That's right. the maximum That's they have maximum. the operation going oh, 30% okay. of, u of the usual well, operations. in no? a way that's a good marketing ploy because maybe the passengers will feel that extra bit safer on the flight. But then if you listen to Michael O'Leary, the chief exec and owner of most of the shares of Ryanair, or many of the shares, uh, he's saying that it would be totally uneconomic to operate a flight below 66% capacity. So at only 30%, oh. he's definitely going to be making a loss. So I hope TUI have got some deep pockets. Uh, yeah, I hope too, because that's quite scary. But what is the other question now? What is with all the other staff? What is with 70%? It's not just 70% of uh, the travel is not going to happen. It's only what, what's going to happen with the staff. Uh, well, I think there's going to be, like we've already heard, lots of redundancies of cabin crew and indeed pilots. I mean, this story about British Airways keeps re-emerging, doesn't it? British Airways wants to uh, basically make everybody redundant and then hire a lesser number back on completely different contracts. Of course, that's caused consternation amongst the unions. The, every airline, uh, to my knowledge, Thomas, has announced substantial redundancies. You know, 3,000 yeah. here, 4,000, 8,000, somewhere else, I do believe. It's... Uh, the airline industry has definitely been decimated right across the globe, you know. Cathay Pacific is another one, Qantas is another one, and, of course, the American airlines were all deeply struggling. Many of those, of course, have received some sort of cash bailout from their respective governments. Oh, uh, yeah. But not so, to my knowledge, yet in the United Kingdom. Certainly nothing substantial, that's for sure. Yeah, Ma, let me go in because I was asking earlier about the prices. So Tom Giddings is writing oh, an right. easy chat end of August. 300 pound return for two people. Seems okay. very cheap to me. Yes, for two people. Well, that's not bad at all, actually. Your return, absolutely. That's a good one. That's better than the 600 you read out uh, earlier on, Thomas. That was from a GN, wasn't it? That was from a GN, yeah. yeah. And uh, here, uh, Johan Din van Zenden, when he says he's paying now from Holland, no? Uh, 596 euros for 13 days. Okay. Mm. That's the holiday he and I have here, so... Okay, that's the whole holiday, I suppose, you know. As things go, it's not too uh, uh, bad. It's not thing, yeah. Man, Gary Norman, hope my 29th of July booking don't get cancelled. Had the 7th of July cancelled with Jet 2. See, ah. there's a Jet 2, you're yeah, right, yeah. The July, the they said they gone on, and now they cancelled that and booked that back, mm, so... They mm. were a, a, a bit uh, free and easy, I think, to begin with. A little bit over-optimistic, shall we say. Yeah, and you know what, what uh, strikes me now is, you know, that should have been all, what is with the 1st of July? There were so many to be there due, was, yes. including our lovely Nikos Louvros, to come on the 1st of July here to Corfu. And we said a couple of weeks ago, oh, is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Uh, we hope it's happening, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, no question about that. But it just, I don't know, it, it changes every it's week. It's a fluid it's a situation, huge, everybody, yeah. I'm afraid to say. But then so is the COVID-19, you know. Some of these figures are absolutely staggering and mind-boggling to me. Yeah, man, Pierre Towers is writing in and saying, easy chat, no? From the 6th to the 17th of September, yeah? 
Hang bitte den 36 oh. Pound for two return. Wow. Okay. Well, can't grumble at that. You can't grumble. So, when you look no. at the flight <laughs> prices, they're not, uh, we expected them all to go sky did, high did, because did. they have to cut the seats out. You have to social distancing. They can't have the full capacity of a plane. Then there's much more work every time uh, they want to uh, depart. They have to clean that plane through. No, like we saw at the EasyJet video. Substantially exactly. increasing exactly. their costs, of their course. Their costs. Totally, but the yeah. prices doesn't seem to, to no. change at all. No. So that's confusing in its own. On its own. As it stands alone, logically speaking, it is. Uh, although I did read a line from some airline that suggested that they're not really expecting huge amount of uptake because of COVID-19. There aren't simply going to be the footfall going through their airports. So maybe the cheaper prices is in some way trying to lure people in. The one thing that the airlines have got in their benefit currently at the moment is substantially lower uh, air fuel costs. As we all know, the price of oil is substantially less than it was, say, six months ago. Still running, on average, around about $30 a barrel. Aviation fuel is a bit different, I know, but I think that is uh, a substantial part of their cost base removed. But of course, it's all been swallowed up with extra cleaning costs and loss of revenue when it comes to food, because most airlines are not serving onboard food and drinks like they used to. No, exactly, and that's gonna be a huge change. She also wrote back, I paid over 300 pound for two for the same dates. So that's another confusing thing then. Uh, yes, don't quite get that, but <laughs> was that this year or are you talking about last um, year? Uh, maybe this was uh, regarding last year probably. Ah, right, yeah, yes, yeah. that kind of makes so sense. So that's kind of make, makes a little bit of it does. sense here. So no, but I think it's 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 it doesn't fit with the prices. We all expected to have much higher fares now on holiday, of course. But uh, it seems nothing changes. Or is this because they don't know if they uh, gonna fly when they arranged it or oh, not? Possibly. Do they playing it yeah. now by ear? I mean, they, how do you calculate as an airline company or as a holiday company, villa owner? How do you calculate calculate that now for your tourism? I honestly don't know the answer. <laughs> I think you'd have <laughs> yeah, to answer yeah, the yeah. financial boffins of the companies involved themselves. Of course, the other subject where prices are, seem to be all over the place is actual prices of accommodation. Because there again, we keep hearing uh, from various people that prices this year have been slashed. Whereas you would have thought quite the opposite, wouldn't you? Because they're having to take in less numbers of guests because of government restrictions. And they're having to employ more people to keep the hotels clean. Uh, accommodation as well, right across the board, as villas and all the rest of it. Uh, it, it definitely substantially increased their cost base. People who are operating villas and small hotels, I would imagine. No, definitely. And when I look, this is not all big business people who own that. Uh, they they have a couple a of villas, so they have times, a small... Yeah. Exactly. There's also thing. But how do you respond now? Because you really have to calculate uh, heavily with everything you do in tourism. You can't, you know, just... You can't waste mas money. It's with every business the same, you know? It's yeah. the overflow. You, you don't want that. Uh, no. <laughs> so it's, it's the whole thing, but here it makes it specially difficult now. Come on, we've been out yesterday and uh, we looked and, uh, you know, man, it looks that the half of the businesses don't want to open at all. It does look. And the way. other half say, no, we give it a go, we try. Mm -hmm. And that uh, that looks uh, it looks weird because we used to have everything open by now. Come on, it's the 16th of, of June. Normally yes, it's bustling here. Yeah. All the shops are open, especially the tourist mm. shop, what is nice. Uh, certain taverners we love to go and eat uh, are open. And that's still all closed. And they are contemplating, should I open at all? Should I stay? And, and, uh, uh, and that's been the case now for at least three or four weeks. Should we open or should we close? Uh, you were saying about a taverna uh, yesterday, Thomas, where they're not serving food yet a while, are they? I think there's a delay till next month on that, just drinks only. There's another just uh, uh, close to us here. Yeah, man, here's yeah. his drinks open, you can have a coffee and there's a fantastic view. What a beautiful location. Great. Right? But he's famous for his food, especially for his messe. And oh, is uh, he? Uh, right. I was yum, quite yum. interested. I thought, you know, I have, a, have, a, have a beer, have a messe, why not? Yeah, and yeah, why also not? the messe, how it's usually to be, uh, how it's usually done here. So, and, and then he says, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to bother. The business is not as much as doesn't justify for me to go and stock up with no, everything I do. So him, I, I aim for the 1st of July, he right. said. Aim, I think that's the key aim. word. Aim. Exactly. Yes, I think with everybody is having to be extra flexible yeah. because this disease is just, it's, it's like a swinging tail, isn't it? It hits you the first time and you think, oh, recovery, and then it comes back and swipes you again. It's yeah, almost that, never-ending, it is. isn't it, really? I mean, cool. 
it, here, uh, why we ask about where the board is from with his 300 uh, bound for the same date. This was last year, he said, from oh, right. Gatwick. Oh, okay. So, uh, booked for this in September. So, it's the same time he booked again, but he pays now less than last year. That's that's strange. It is, uh, yes, but I think it is a combination of possibly them, they're thinking desperately ways of attracting people on board because there must be a lot of people who simply have ruled out having any sort of holiday 2020 simply because of uh, other issues they've got going with COVID-19. So there must be a lot of people who put it into the long grass. Long grass, uh, yeah. Thing, yeah. And I think there is still a fear factor out there with many people, although you wouldn't see that judging by the enormous queues when they opened up the non-essential shops in England yesterday, Thomas. Did you see the queue for Primark in London? I know, that it, was, it was incredible. It was a mile long and took two hours or more to get through and no social distancing, which people have made the comment as to why were they allowed to do that when they're not allowed to go back to work. And that's a good uh, point. Uh, that, that, that's the next thing when Tom Gettings is writing, here. I have seen pay for two weeks and get the third week free. Ah, oh, right. Okay, but if you say it's only shopping now, it fits in, you know, buy two, get the third free. I yep. mean, <laughs> and that's what Primark <laughs> yesterday, we saw these pictures and there were a couple of great oh, pictures that's coming down out. Oh, that's why that lady had four yeah. bags stand sitting on that fountain. I wondered why. That explains that then. It's yes. a, you know, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Oh, but they actually, you reminded me. I owe everybody an apology because on our last broadcast, which was uh, last week on Friday, I made a point of saying that Primark was one of the few major UK retailers that were not going to be opening on Monday. Well, over the weekend, they must have had a change of heart because guess what? Hey, Presto, you already know this. Ah, they they opened, opened up, yes, all 196 of their branches or however many it is, something of that order. Funny well, that, isn't it? It's incredible, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. But that's the uncertainty <laughs> what's going to hit everybody. I mean, here, uh, Jane Nichols is riding in, and that's a good one. Anybody driving over to Greece no, from the UK, the Brenner Pass is now open from oh, today on. Thank you for so telling us that's that. a good that's one. A so good anybody driving the Brenner Pass is now yeah. open again. But it's no ferries going. So if you come drive down, I want to know, is there any ferries going? Jay, uh, have you booked any ferries? It, you know, I'm interested because we know there is no ferry service until the 1st of July. That's what's been announced just yesterday by the Greek government, according to Jan Massé in Benitez. I'm sure he's right. He knows these things. Uh, and that date itself, as I've said earlier on, keeps changing. So it's all change, everybody. Every day it's a different scenario almost, isn't it? But it is down to the nature of the shifting nature of COVID-19 and the continually increasing Couldn't number of cases, yeah, it's, quite it's, frankly. It's quite a little... It's, it's sad on the one side. I it mean, is, here yeah. I got in while we spoke Tui. Yeah, Let yes. me go back to that one. Tom Giddings is saying, my girlfriend is a child rep for Tui. She oh. hasn't received a lot from them. And when she did, they basically said to her, Contracts have been scrapped. Just oh. doesn't feel right. No. So blimey. and that's and I heard that earlier. I heard that from other places too, where they say, you know, we're not getting any explanation. They all think we assume, hey, it's COVID. Uh, jobs gonna be lost. Get used to it. Why are looking so surprised? Uh, yes, on one side they right, on the other side, hey, is there nothing in place we can uh, support that, or are the governments are not responding right in the right way now? Uh, <laughs> maybe six of one and half a dozen of another. I, I, many governments simply don't know quite how, what, how to handle it, I don't think, Thomas. Yeah. And, of course, they're getting conflicting information. It always amuses me, the ones that says we're, we're doing everything that we're doing, told to do by the scientists, which they kind of do, and then the scientists come along and say, oh, I didn't say that, uh, and I'm relating to that too regarding the social distancing, because apparently yesterday it emerged that Sir Patrick Valance, the government in the United Kingdom's chief um, scientific advisor claimed he never said about two metres. So, uh, I don't know, they, they're still actively considering bringing that down from two to one, because as we keep saying, UK hospitality and the pubs and restaurant business in the United Kingdom are simply saying it's totally uneconomically viable to open at that uh, two metre distance. You just wouldn't get the customers through the door to make it worthwhile opening. So there's yeah, enormous so pressure on the UK government. Uh, we did read out what other countries are doing. I mean, they could split between two down to 1.8. I think one was doing. 1.5 was another. Uh, and loads are already on one, uh, including uh, France, I do believe. Bonjour to all our French-speaking friends. Yeah, here, uh, while you're looking for that, I'm just letting in here. Gary Norman is asking, is the bars uh, open in Corfu? Half, half. half. 
Yes. No, the bars are open, but not all. It is no, not all, the... but many of them are. You wouldn't be you wouldn't be hard pushed to get a drink in a favourite spot. I'm sure of that. No, nah, definitely. That's that seems to be uh, more accessible now. Yes, bars yeah. eating that's a little bit more patchy, isn't more it? More patchy. With the yeah. eating is getting yeah. patchy. But for drink, they have the coffees. They have some taverners open. They only uh, serve drinks, and there is bars what. Uh, open and just started but the whole picture is changing as we said to you oh we open for tourism everything got celebrated you saw this in the local news too oh we ready and then you see pictures this is why we said it doesn't feel right no, we go we in did, yeah. to town and we set up and we show you the empty roads that's depressing very depressing it's not quite right is it no uh, and if everybody else is feeling disinclined to go out then maybe we are too <laughs> i don't know but no we certainly don't want to be uh, festooning you all with photographs of empty beautiful places we just concentrate on the beautiful places where it doesn't really matter whether they're empty or not possibly yeah, but they're empty but for good reasons for the wildlife for instance Oh, definitely. That is covering perfectly as we experienced ourselves yesterday here. <laughs> so, but <laughs> yes, we know about great that. Great on there. But you know, I got another. Why we are asking about the ferries and Jay Nichols uh, uh, is saying, yeah, we have a ferry booking with Anek ferries for the fourth of July from Venice. So being hopeful. So they got their earliest fourth of July okay. from Venice. That's for. When you arrive with a car or a motorhome, well, camper van or a yeah. caravan. Super. Let's hope that uh, date sticks and doesn't get changed yet again. Yeah. And uh, what's with the water park with uh, here? Aqualand. Aqualand. Here on Corfu. We have no idea at the moment. At the moment it's closed. No. We haven't heard anything. Right? That would have been I went in the past local there. Yeah. I'm just thinking about that. I went past there uh, less than a week ago and I can definitely tell you it was closed. Although there have definitely been people doing it up, giving it a once over, a makeover, a bit of a clean up. But they, it certainly wasn't open to tourists. Definitely not, Thomas. Yeah. But uh, guys out there listening now, don't get us wrong. It's still a fantastic island to come on holiday. There's still enough to do and there is still uh, there, there's more than enough open to get watered and fed so it's not like it's just a situation at the moment here this is so half and half some of the businesses what are normally open this is owned by people from the mainland uh, they can only come now over here and start renovating and some of them saying you know what it's not worse for these two months if we have two months but all the locals who own businesses here they all try to open they all try to get their business ready to welcome you and some are some are open, so it's not like everything is oh, closed. No, 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 no. no you can get all. your drink, of you can course. get your food, you can have yes. your tours. Totally. We saw all the rent car companies are getting ready. Okay, there is still a lot of rent cars out there without number plates, but they are doing that at the moment. They're all parked on uh, up at the moment and they're getting registered. They, they're preparing. So everything, if you want to hire a motorbike, a scooter or uh, a rent car, not going to be a problem. There, There is places with food open so there is taverners open and other uh, restaurants open definitely For there sure. is some uh, all I, the shops. I saw sing driving time spiros from Paramonas. what has the boats or costas from Paramonas? right what has the boats oh i know bentati he is you oh, know from st george Ni nico, nico, nico sorry fantastic i saw guy. him nico doing yes, already yes. the boats oh, down right, to st george right. south that's a good so sign yeah. that's exactly <laughs> that's a good sign they opening up so it's it not is. Not like there's nothing to do here. There is more than enough to do on this island. Absolutely. And you, we have fantastic weather and you can enjoy your holiday, definitely. If you can get here. <laughs> That's the main thing, of course. Oh uh, Yeah, if you can get here. But the other question is, what, what is now with all the rules? What is with quarantine? There, we don't know. Because in Britain, they said they're going to... Uh, uh, give the decision in a couple of weeks. At you the moment, a couple of, you have a couple of weeks. Days. It's 1st it's, it's yeah. of July. So... Yes. The, they should have said we're not giving any decision before the 1st of July. No, it was very controversial, uh, the UK authorities bringing in the 14-day quarantine, and it's a bit patchy anyway. There was exclusions for the Isle of Man, the Channel Islands, and the good old Republic of Ireland. But everyone else would have to quarantine, even if they were British nationals returning home. That is, if they were uh, able to get out of the country in the first place. So uh, I think that 14-day thing is going to change in any case. That's going to change def yeah. definitely. Okay. They all can't withstand it. Yeah. What, what, what you said, the restriction, um, not travel restrictions for Greece now with the testing. So from the A countries, oh, they not A's getting group, group A, only get a uh, uh, spot tested, no? Uh, group A are spot tested, random. I random don't know how tests. many tests every flight, but not many, I don't think. But Group B was everybody. 
irrespective of whether you looked ill or not. Um, just to read through what Group B was. Albania, Belgium, France, Italy, North Macedonia, Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, Sweden and other non-EU countries such as Australia, New Zealand and Israel. They're the ones that you definitely will be tested on arrival at either Athens or Thessaloniki Airport. Group A, if you're lucky enough to come from any of these countries, there is no stringent testing, just random, and they are Austria, Bulgaria, Croatia, Cyprus, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, Germany, Hungary, Iceland, Ireland, Latvia, Liechtenstein, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malta, Norway, Poland, Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia and Switzerland. Wow. Uh, while we're on the subject, Thomas, just going off tangent, Switzerland. Yeah. The most extraordinary thing in Switzerland, the Swiss authorities are desperately trying to find the owner of a hold all that was left on a train between St. Gallen and Lucerne the other day in a carriage. It weighed three kilograms, and do you know what it contained, Thomas? No. <laughs> well, it contained 150 thousand pounds worth uh, probably 170 euros thousand euros worth of pure gold would you believe wow. who, who in their right mind would leave three kilos of gold on a train carriage in uh, Switzerland? how did he lose that one we don't know we don't know but what a thing to find in lost property hey the prosecutor's office will be very pleased to hear from them in lucerne and by the way you'll be pleased to know you've got five years to make that claim so, if anyone out there has lost a pot of gold, you can go along to the prosecutor's office in Lucerne to claim your lucky dip prize, even though it was possibly yours to begin with, or possibly not yours to begin with. Who knows? If anyone in Switzerland, and we do have a few wonderful viewers in Switzerland, fabulous country, please let us know. I'd love to know the upshot of that story about missing gold on a sweet Swiss train. Um, the other thing, yes. Thomas, that I ought to mention, somebody mentioned earlier on the beginning of the programme about lightning and thunderstorms, and yes, this island is renowned for the most extraordinary oh, yeah, man. storms. <laughs> but let us spare a thought I'm going to uh, put into mine again now. It's a very sad story, quickly, from Germany. Uh, Saxony, I think it is. Uh, and a 44-year-old uh, politician from the CDU party was hosting a small barbecue party in his house, and he decided he had to go to... Uh, answer a call of nature shall we say so while he was doing that uh, there was an electrical bolt of lightning and the poor man died simply because he was going to the toilet as it were of course I should point out he was doing so under a power cable but that stood out to me Thomas because I must admit I would never think of making sure there weren't any power cables above my head should I have chose to do Ooh, such a thing you as have that. to yeah but there yeah, you go just shows uh, you how dangerous electrical storms can be yeah, and I have to be careful. And that where we have here at sea, and I heard that from the sailors here. No, when it's really coming in, you have to go ashore. You have to go into a harbor closely here too, because you have to be careful. But here, you know, it's uh, you know, when you do this under a high voltage cable, it's not a good idea, is it? No, obviously not. And that poor man paid with his life, very unexpectedly, I'm sure. Horrifying to the party guests. Yeah, man, let me give you some updates here. Uh, Patricia Webster is saying, I think there are about six or seven restaurants open in Benitzis only. I mean, wow, it's okay. only six to seven and they have quite a yes, lot. Although I would say that's a great improvement on a few weeks back when I would think there were only two. So thank there you. There were only two open. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for telling us that, Patricia. Useful yeah. piece of information. And Tom is saying, spoke with my friend from uh, Tutor in Guvia. He said he is open, but most places open first of July. Restaurants, etc. Okay, yes. Well, that's in keeping with other news from other quarters. Uh, let's hope that they can stick to that date at least. Yeah, I hope too. So, uh, no, uh, this, is, uh, this is encouraging. The business is opening. It is nearly back to normal, but this is the new normal, and we're gonna feel that here. So, uh, there's precautions being made on the island. That's another info I got. So, they have designated hotels, the municipals from the south, central, and north uh, hired on, and they are dedicated for quarantine zones. So right. should there something be? There's a couple of hotels there dedicated that where they preparing should something happen. Oh, preparing for should something uh, yes, happen that's a good idea, while isn't it? the holiday season is going on. That's very good to know. Uh, I've also read in the United Kingdom that those Nightingale hospitals that have been criticised for their underuse are still very much available should the sad need arise for them to be open again. They haven't gone away. They're just kind of temporarily mothballed. Let's hope they're not put to use. 
Yeah, now I hope they are not being good to you. So it's 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 all here. So at the moment it's still positive. You have you know it's mixed feeling positive. You got a little bit of mixed feeling, but we are all thinking positive because there were a couple of good news coming out, especially uh, for now ICU patients for really heavily infected with COVID food steroids. Okay. That were a story where they started subscribing. Uh, 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 I have to get the stories up, and we put this this week into the show. But just before we came on, there was a, a, a report breaking about steroids, giving them saves the third of the ICU patients. And that's a step forward. So there okay. is some development going on. That's good. I also heard that the Food and Drug Administration in America has withdrawn temporary approval from that drug that we all got to know President Trump was taking on a daily basis. He turned out he was taking it for 14 days apparently with no side effects. That's the hydroxychloroquine, uh, which originally was a malaria treatment and also is used uh, extensively by people suffering from lupus, which is an immune Ooh. disease. But the FDA have removed it completely from its books because it had no effectiveness against people, A, catching COVID-19, and it certainly didn't help those who had been taking it with any symptoms. So all round, a bit of a waste of time. And there were side effects, despite what President Donald Trump might have said. Yeah, and yeah, and of course, I mean, forget him. What he says is, you know, <laughs> oh, what I wish I mean. could. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't because he is the so called leader of the so called free world. But anyway, let's see. Yeah. The, the political landscape might be very different come November. Yeah, and let's go back to some positive things where I have to show a couple of things, and there's good messages coming in because we five minutes. That's it again. But good news. And thank you, Jerry O.D., for reminding me. He said, I have seen free bikes to cycle around Corfu Down. And yes, that's right. The municipality of Corfu, Corfu Down uh, put outside Chunk Giacomo. Yeah. Uh, I think at least 20 bikes there. Oh, right. yeah? And they are free to use. You can so go there. Better. You can grab that. You, you cycle around town a little bit and you bring the bike back there and they free of charge what a, what a fantastic idea, yes. idea. Thank Jerry, you, Jerry thank you for Cheers. reminding us this is one of the stories I was reading today but another thing I wanted to show you today guys is if you you know really really this is all, all the English people no? for all our English listeners and viewers out there if you're in Surrey yeah oh, and yes, you want yes. a little bit of core foo <laughs> then that's what we have for you here oh, have a look here yeah, look at that that looks good oh, it? it's wow. great isn't it beautiful and what that's a drink. That's cocktails amazing. made yes. by spiros and triotis ah, our good friend a good friend. Uh, the address is exactly... Yes, it's uh, The Curve at 8 Bar, and that's at Church Street in Isha, which is Surrey, which is very, very, very South London, a very salubrious suburb Isha is. Just up the road in Cobham is where the Chelsea Football Club train, would you believe? But Isha High Street and all around there is a beautiful area, uh, well south of London. But I do recommend you going to it. Curve 8 and Spiro, as Thomas has said, he won the Young Bartenders uh, Award here in Greece uh, a year or so in ago, didn't he? In 2017, 2017 Spiros Andriotis won right, the yes. Young Barmender, uh, Bartender. And there he is, you see the man Greek, himself. And here is he the with the background, and he yes. had fantastic cocktails. So he's a Kofriot, and he makes your Kofriot cocktails. You never had them before in your life, and you Amazing. are so lucky because you got out down to Surrey and there. He is, and they deliver at the moment, so the bar is closed, but they do delivery. Take they sell, away they cocktails. Take away cocktails. I know. Isn't it? Marvelous. And it's that's great. That's ingenious, isn't it? And you know, here, look oh, at that. Exactly. And that's all his creation. Look, look at the attention to detail. Aren't those uh, flowers and fruits beautiful? All created individually by piece by piece by Spiro there. He's a master at that. Oh, he is fantastic. What a talent he is. Yeah. And the cocktail on the right. And uh, a great bloke as well, too. Ah, fantastic. The but the cocktail here on the right, that's the cocktail he won the competition with. The one on the right. The right. one on the right, fantastic. the green one. Very yes. impressive indeed. We were there streaming, weren't we? In we were there. We had a look yeah. at that. And it was great. And Well uh, done, Spiro. Well done, look at that. That is and that's marvellous. So, you know, if you miss oh. Kofu this little bit here, you can get a that, little bit of... The flower a, is so uh, good. Yeah, Tom, it's so brilliant, isn't bits it? Bits of apple. Who would have thought it end up looking like that? Fantastic. And that's 
fine. And Actually, I'm getting uh, quite thirsty looking I at know, that. I know, Nad, he's great, you know. And <laughs> go to their Facebook page at uh, Curve8Bar. You can see it on the bottom of the screen. Check that out. And if you want a little bit of Corfu, go down, visit them when they open. Or go somewhere and, and order a drink, you know, a takeaway cocktail. I, I think it's a great idea. Absolutely. But from us Brilliant. here, Oled Studio Kerkira, we send a lot of loves and big hugs to our friends, our Greek friends in the United Kingdom. We and certainly uh, do. Definitely. And one of them is... Uh, Spiros Andriotis and then Nikos and Nico Jr. Junior, I would just yeah. say him as well. They've so been great guys, friends. And Terry, of course, our yes. tattooist from here. So oh, guys, Terry, yes. hello, uh, Terry. hello from Kofu and that's some yeah, it's great. I can't wait. I I made myself thirsty now, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Do you want one final good news story relating to something that we mentioned quite a long time ago in lockdown SK? It's about elephants from Thailand. You remember maybe remember we were very concerned about the no tourists being in Thailand and therefore all the elephants roaming the streets of places like Bangkok, for instance, and uh Pattaya uh were going hungry. Well, a charity, um a, one lady and a charity have got together and they went on a trek a hundred miles and they took yeah. all the elephants back to their villages would you believe which is absolutely extraordinary and when they got back there they were subject to a fantastic elephant banquet uh, on, Ooh, on trestle elephant tables banquet. oh it looked so wonderful and I think the thing that was took pride of place there were bananas would you believe they obviously have a penchant <laughs> for bananas elephants but I was very pleased to hear that at least uh, 30 I think it was elephants have made it back safely no 57 I do apologize 57 elephants, but there are over 3,000 working elephants in Thailand, would you believe? Staggering number, just for tourists' pleasure and tours. I hope the others make it back to their villages. Yeah, so do I. I think it's great. Yeah. And I can see the sunshine straight into your face, mate. How beautiful is that, isn't it? <laughs> Steady. <laughs> I have that over here. But, guys, uh, I said it so many times now that I sadly yeah. have to say it again. That's all we have time for today. It's fantastic. All the participation from you guys with all your messages and comments. So, if there's anything I have missed today, I really apologize. I try to get it in in tomorrow's show here from beautiful Core Fu again. But if there's anything else you want to let us know, uh, don't hesitate, write to us, inbox at studiokerkira.com. So we're going to go out every day now and look for more information and see how the situation is. But at the moment, uh, it's great. Everything seems to be all right. Most of the businesses are open up a lot, getting prepared. And from today on, yes, they open, but they're going to be more and more. And over the next two weeks, we're going to find out how the whole thing going to go down. But we can keep you up to date here definitely but for today thank you so much for watching thanks for tuning in thanks for listening thanks for commenting and hopefully we see you tomorrow 6 p.m greek time 5 p.m EU, uh, eu time and 4 p.m uk time again until then have a fantastic evening and kalinikta from me Yes, and as always, thank you very much for sharing your time with us here on Unlocked SK. Enjoy the rest of the day wherever you are, and as always, a very good afternoon to you all. <laughs>